Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Prepping is a very small industry in the United States, with annual spending specifically for prepping less than what the government will spend in the time it took me to prepare this episode. The amount of spending is an interesting issue. So is the purpose and efficiency of prepping. However, the mainstream media demeans preppers as irrational and out of touch with reality. Note that from a scientific point of view, however, prepping is rational, efficient, and very normal. I'm not an expert prepper or even an expert on the prepping industry. This is not a how-to episode, nor is it meant to be any kind of advice. Uh, In this episode, I will focus solely on prepping uh, for natural disasters and not on artificial disasters. Artificial disasters come not from society itself or nature, but from the government. These would include things like war, hyperinflation, or economic collapse associated with runaway government spending, debt, and money printing inflation. Even basic government interventions, however, like forestry policy, are known to increase natural disasters. Government-created disasters are worse and longer-lasting than natural disasters and require additional preparations for issues like home production, self-protection, and even alternative money and health care. So while each natural disaster seems completely random, sent from some malicious god, uh, they actually follow a pattern that are increasingly known to science. So that even if an individual event in a particular area is extremely unlikely to happen, even in one's entire lifetime, the increasing severity of natural disasters in general is probably completely attributable to increased reporting and much larger populations living in the dangerous areas. So why do people prep? Well, the simple answer is because while the probabilities are extremely low, the cost of preparation is also extremely low and the benefits are extremely high. The costs are extremely low because all of our emergency necessities are not really perishable or are only semi-perishable. Water, food, medicines, paper goods, disposables, uh, alternative lighting and cooking are all things that we should probably have on hand in inventory all the time. Prepping is just making sure you have all of that, along with maybe an emergency medical kit, a flashlight, fire extinguisher, etc. Stage two prepping is just adding to these inventories for the possibility of a longer emergency. Uh, Anyone can do so simply by buying some of the identified items in larger sizes or in bulk so that every pay period uh, you buy something in bulk, uh, possibly saving money. Uh, And this preparation is made even more economical when dastardly government inflates the paper money supply and drives up prices over time. Here, everything you buy at the store today on sale is probably only going to go up in price. You can extend those savings by including other goods like toiletries. Now, how are the benefits of prepping extremely high? Well, the market economy is so good at providing all that we need at stable prices that we often make the mistake of equating the market price of a good with the value of a good. When natural disasters hit, the supply of some goods might be stopped altogether. Other goods might find a newfound importance, such as flashlight batteries. Some goods 
only seem to realize their value in an emergency, like a fire extinguisher or a solar-powered radio that we otherwise only get to enjoy when we're outside either working or playing. Preppers usually remember to have all of these type of, of goods on hand in inventory. And now I'm not saying <laughs> that people don't go overboard with prepping. What I am saying is that preppers are actually just saving and investing smarter than non-preppers in terms of economic science. It might also be just a matter of taste. Um, I would hazard a guess that preppers are probably more risk averse and less likely to, to locate in earthquake zones or river flood zones. Uh, preppers are, might also have lower time preferences and are more likely, therefore, to save and invest in the future, providing the personal as well as the social building blocks for a better society. Now, of course, the capitalist process also makes good use of the risk takers among us as entrepreneurs and even those with avant-garde tastes for creativity. Prepping or being prepared is a highly rational activity. In a natural disaster, preppers are much more likely to contribute to solving the problems as actual first responders and are far less likely to increase the burden of the disaster itself as so-called victims.